Today, on Energy Contact, have you ever heard of new agey people who refer to themselves as a light body or being in their light body? Well, a body made of light and not matter is a ridiculous concept, isn't it? Well, it's also accurate. It's correct. Today, we're going to look at the science of all that, and we'll see what it has to do with your chakras and your aura and your health. So lighten up and stick around for the next half hour. You're about to be illuminated right now on Energy Contact. Hello, and welcome to Energy Contact. My name is Joseph Willenbrink. Thank you for joining me today, and thank you to the production staff here in the studio for helping me get my message out to you. Energy Contact is a series I'm presenting to you as a public service. It's about attaining perfect health, growth, self-improvement, happiness, and realizing your full potential. It's designed to present you a new way of seeing yourself, and a new way of seeing the world around you. We're talking about things that have to do with making an energetic contact, an energetic contact with yourself internally and with your environment. There's no difference between the body, the mind, the spirit, the emotion, the intellect, the ego. There's no difference between mass and energy. These things are all the same. There is something about us that just loves to categorize and classify, parse these things out, set them each in their own little separate spaces. But in fact, all that health and self-improvement we're talking about take place when we do just the opposite. It happens when we put these things together, when we make an energetic contact between the physical world and the unseen one. We're presenting on these shows a brand new paradigm, a brand new paradigm that's thousands of years old. We're presenting extraordinary topics for ordinary people. And let's move right ahead with that. Let's bring up our slide. Please understand that I am not a doctor. I don't want to be a doctor. This show is not a medical show of any kind, not a medical talk show, medical advice show, anything like couldn't be further from it. I call myself an energy healer, a chakra healer. So might you if you came to me, but state, federal, and local governments absolutely do not. And it's important to know that. There's a lot of important information on your screen right now. Please read all that with your full attention if you will. But when you've got it down, now would be a great time to locate a pencil and paper. And here's why you want to do that. At the end of this show, we're going to run some credits, and on those credits, there's going to be contact information for me. Now, I invite and encourage you to contact me. I'm sort of hoping that something I have to tell you today might inspire you to want to do that. But in order to contact me, you're going to need that contact information. In order to get that, you're going to need a pencil and paper. There will be plenty of time to jot that stuff down if you've got your pencil and paper ready. All right, let's come back up here. Today's show is show number 72. And if you're tuning in for the first time today, well, thanks. Thanks and welcome. You'll enjoy the show today. These shows are sequential. They build. So we're talking about things today that we've introduced, defined, explained previously. So there's a little ramp up time, some up to speed things that you will have missed out on. However, I do my very best to make every show have a lot of value on a standalone basis. And I believe today's show does. If, however, what you see today piques your interest, and it is one of your first times joining me, please look around because there will be earlier programs airing at later times. They'll either be re-airing right here on this station, or they'll be on at different days and times in different areas. And if you look for them, I'll appreciate it. And now, it's the part of the show where I get to introduce my co-host. Let's get Slim on camera. Here's my buddy Slim, and Slim is here for a reason. Since we're investigating what it is that the energy contacts in the physical self, we got to know a few somethings about a few somethings, don't we? We have to know something about energy, and this show is certainly all about energy. But all of that energy out there somewhere in some abstract place does us no good. It does us no good at all until we bring it into focus, until we bring it into contact with something. My pal Slim here is here to help us understand what that thing is that the energy contacts. Remember, a body without energy is just a corpse. An energy without a body, 
Well, it might be a number of cool things, but none of them are human. All right, previously on Energy Contact, we have been looking at your chakras and your aura, invisible things. And we have seen that what is visible and what is invisible have absolutely nothing to do with what is real and what is unreal. Just because you can't see something, don't mean it ain't real. And just because you can, doesn't mean that it is. Matter doesn't matter. It's just a perception. It's an optical illusion. It's a hologram. It's that energetic world of wavelengths and frequencies and flows and vibrations. That's all that's real. That's all that's important. Form, this physical form, is just a creation. It's a projection of thought. And thought is a wave. So is your aura, for that matter. They're energy fields. Now, energetically, there's really no difference between anything and anything. That's one of the main points of energy contact. It's all one thing, like ice, water, and steam. Looks different, seems different, but all the same thing. But yet the physical world, we live in a world filled with perceived differences. And even though we know it's a false perception, everything here seems to be binary to divide into either or, one or the other. Now there are a couple of tools that thought uses in order to generate this appearance of form. The internal forces that animate us, breath, pulse, rhythm, frequency, wave, constant motion, and the external forces that like to push and pull us around, gravity and energy and entropy. The bumps and bruises, the kiss and hugs of life, all just iterating and interacting and, and messing around with, with the internal forces. Now we've seen that the energy component of the external forces also includes other things, electricity, wireless internet signals, cell phone signals, radio waves, things like that. The list is just endless. And that things like chakras and nadis and aura, things like that, they are among the internal forces at our disposal. So, the frequencies of all of these things all lie somewhere on what science calls the electromagnetic spectrum. And our investigation of that has revealed to us that there's a lot going on in the universe that our eyes aren't seeing, that our senses aren't perceiving. We've seen one thing for sure that's real, though. We've seen that invisible body intellect. All those things that we were always taught they were brain things, thought, memory, reason, recall, intellect, intelligence, all those things, we have seen that they in fact are in every cell of our body. They permeate every cell, every atom of us, every fiber of us. Your body is just an unreal physical projection of that invisible body intellect. And so we now accurately see ourselves not as physical creatures that happen to contain some energy, but as energy beings that happen to have a physical shell. We know too that all of these forces somehow manage to keep each other in balance. And that balance holds the key to life and death, sickness and health, pleasure and pain, attraction and repulsion, order and chaos, all of those sorts of things. And that brings us to today. Today, we want to understand how just being us constitutes being a network, a system that must remain in balance. And knowing that, we want to know what we can do to retain a healthy balance in our life and how we can restore balance if it should slip away. And, by the way, if we're just one thing, then what's the other thing that we want to balance with? We want to know a little about that. We want to see how your aura and your chakras and your nadis and kundalini all fit into that picture and why it matters. Specifically, we want to see what it is about those things that give order, form, shape, substance, things like that, a physical presence. What holds these seemingly random energetic motions in equilibrium? Chemical and physical systems long to achieve equilibrium. Physicists are preoccupied with equilibrium, and they're always hypothesizing about the nature and the balance of physical forces and the repercussions of imbalances. Well, that's what we're doing too. But this understanding is not really our goal. Our goal is to get to what all this aura, chakra, internal, external balance business has to do with your health, your growth, your happiness, your realization of your full potential, your growth. But for now, we're just studying a little physics, the hard science behind it all. And it's all very basic. It's as basic 
as E equals mc squared. So we want to understand it that way. We want to get to the Newton and the Einstein of it all. And so today, by the end of the show, we'll end up covering some very dry technical material. So be prepared for that. We're looking at esoteric things analytically. Looking at mysticism through scientific eyes. It's an important thing to do and not enough people do it. And while this analysis is worthwhile, it also means to some extent we're classifying and categorizing. And that is dangerous territory here on Energy Contact. So please understand, please be aware that too much of that will take you away from your goal rather than towards it. All right. So, plenty to do today, but now we've reached the part of the show where we get to take a break for a second before we continue. We've reached the part of the show where we get to take our virtual field trip, our journey in our mind's eye. And for today's field trip, we're going to uh, return to last show's field trip. Now, for those of you who weren't here last time, I'll recap. You find yourself in a science and technology museum of some sort, and you've entered a room full of floating magnets. They're just all floating around, and there's a bunch of them. Now, the museum guide tells you that these magnets are floating around the energy field in that room. And you can see that they're all floating around some sort of big central magnet, kind of the way that planets float around the solar system, or the way electrons float around the nucleus of an atom. Now, these magnets are very stable in this field. And of course, just because you're in that room, it means the magnetic field, the energy field, is flowing through you too. We know that there is no magnetic field without an energy field and vice versa. Now just your movement in this room ca causes a disruption in the magnetic field just a little bit. It's like, it's like the way walking in a pool upsets the water a little bit. And so as you move, the magnets just sort of bob around accordingly. And now, just for fun, you reach up and grab one of these magnets. And the instant you do, you have to duck, you have to hit the deck. Because doing that causes all of the other magnets to instantaneously move to find a new equilibrium. And these things may be floating, but they're heavy metal objects. They're like flying bricks. But let's say that there's some sort of chute or something. You can take that one magnet that you've taken out of the room. Well, soon, all the other magnets, they find their new equilibrium, and things are close to where they were. So what do you do? Well, you grab another magnet, and the same thing happens all over again. The same set of steps. And when it comes to equilibrium again, you do the same thing again. And you do it a few times, and every time you remove a magnet, the remaining ones seem to readjust and recover somehow, albeit in a new configuration. Then, after a few more times, you grab yet another one. And this time, like that, all the rest of them just fall on the floor. Now you take a few minutes to see if you can get them back up in the air again. But, in, now, instead of behaving like floats on the swimming pool, they're behaving more like bricks. You can't do anything to get them back up in the air. And even though the external energy field, the, the field around the rest of the room hasn't changed a bit, nothing you can do can get those magnets back up in the air again. Hold that thought. We've seen on energy contact that there is only one thing. That the appearance of multiple things is like the appearance of colors of light through a prism. To complicate it further, everything is a network, corporately and individually. So we are a system, inside a system, inside another system, and we've got systems inside us. The physical world, though, appears to be a binary place. It exists in zeros and ones, one or the other, yin and yang, attraction, repulsion, raga, devesha, either or. And we experience that in terms of things like happy and sad, sick and healthy, hot and cold, pleasure and pain, things like that. So among these binary pairs, there are a pair called the internal forces and the external forces. And we've been looking at them for a long time. But just recently, we've started to see them in the context of your aura and your chakras. We consist of internal forces, breath, rhythm, pulse, frequency, vibration. But auras and nadis and chakras, those things we've discussed over the past number of shows, they fit in there somewhere too. And all of these things are acted upon by a series of external forces. 
we've seen gravity and energy and entropy. And we've seen that that energy component is composed largely of the energy waves of the electromagnetic spectrum. So, we end up with a set of forces working from within us, shining out, and a set of forces on the outside. Now those outside forces are pressuring us. They're pushing us in. It's okay. It's supposed to be like that. And we push back. But we just mentioned entropy. Entropy is important to understand because entropy is the law of, that says everything is falling apart. So if you are doing nothing right now, you are falling apart right now. To pull yourself together and keep yourself that way, you have to do something. It's going to take some effort. Today, we're seeing that what works with entropy to prevent us from disintegrating is that balance. It's that healthy equilibrium. It's that delicate but stable thing that you were messing with in the magnet room a couple minutes ago. Now, entropy, like all of these forces, is invisible. You can't draw a picture of it, but it's very real. A surgeon can cut you open and fish around and look all day long. He will not find any entropy. It operates in the realms of the wavelengths of the electromagnetic spectrum. Let's take a look at that. Let's bring up a slide of the electromagnetic spectrum. This is a model of some, en of some energy that affects us. There is a lot going on in the universe that our eyes, that our physical senses do not perceive. And we know this because of that entire universe of waves represented on that top model there, that whole gray banner going across the top of your screen. The only thing that you can see is that tiny little section in the middle there, inside the red, inside the red circle. The entire visible spectrum is ostensibly made of the seven colors of the rainbow, and they're all in that tiny little white area. But even so, those colors aren't real. Only the pure white light's real. Color is just the perception. It's reality bent through that prism there. And when it bends, it fragments into the colors of the rainbow. Isaac Newton is the fellow who figured that out. All right, let's come back here. We live in these fields. We're bathed in them, swimming about like fish in a big energetic fishbowl, or like the magnets in the magnet room. And there's no real boundary between where our environment ends and where we begin. It's arbitrary at best. In other words, there's no distinction between the water in the fishbowl and the water in the fish, between what is internal and what is external. And yet, we need to find balance between them. So, here we are, a scale model of the universe, the same way our cells are scale models of us. Really, we're just a no bunch of nothings floating around other nothings inside fields, external fields of something. We're complex systems inside other complex systems, like Russian nesting dolls, all managed by internal forces and external ones, which are in constant motion. They never get tired. They're immortal. Yet, they're delicately balanced. They're constantly reshaping and rebalancing that empty nothing that you call you. And all the while this is going on, you've got chakras spinning about, causing your electrons to orbit your, the nucleuses of your nuclei of your cells like the magnets were orbiting in that room. All of this energy is moving through you constantly. It's moving through you like nothing, like x-rays do. Every wave moves through you like that. It moves through your mass, any mass. There's, there's no difference. Mass and energy are all the same. And your nadis and your chakras and your aura just sort of regulate the cause and effect of all that. Let's look at that for a moment. Let's bring up another slide. You have hundreds of chakras, but there are seven main ones. Let's take a look at that. That fellow on the left of your screen right there, he's a schematic model. You'll notice on him there are seven main chakras. The middle five ones have a front and a back, and they point out horizontally, parallel to the earth and parallel to each other. The bottom and top, ch top chakra are vertical. They do not have a front and a back, and they are perpendicular to the earth. In a way, they're the front and back of each other. Now notice the colors. These seven main chakras each have their own color, and they are the exact same rainbow colors that you just saw on the electromagnetic spectrum. Going from the bottom up, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. And each of these chakras has its own geometric 
its own geometric shape. We'll take a look at that in detail in a, in a show upcoming soon. Now, all of these things are ordered. They are not random, and they are not accidental. And your health, growth, happiness, self-improvement, and the realization of your full potential, or lack thereof, are all a function of their balance, or lack thereof. Now, let's see what all this has to do with your aura. Let's go right to the next slide. We've seen that we don't really have an aura. It's a misnomer. We have a series of bodies. We've got one physical body and another six or so that are more subtle. That is more etheric, less thick. They're invisible, but at least as real. Now, as it happens, each of the seven main chakras correspond to one of these bodies. There's a one-to-one -one correspondence. We're going to look at that more in the future soon, too. But we can see here that the subtle bodies give the aura a series of layers, like, the, like an onion. What these pictures cannot show you, though, is that those layers sort of flux and shimmer, like the wavy lines down a, down a road on a hot day. And oh, by the way, there's no difference between your physical body and your subtle one. All right, let's come back up here. These chakras are in constant motion. They're spinning. And for now, you can visualize that the more they spin, the healthier you are. That's not completely accurate. We'll tune that up later. But it's a good way to start in with it. That spinning causes a vibration, which generates a field. And that sets up a chain reaction. Fields have wavelength, pulse, frequency, and motion, all the internal forces, which create a sympathetic harmony in the subtle bodies, in the aura, which creates a nice energy shimmering effect, that shimmering effect that I told you about, like the wavy lines in the distance down the road on a hot day, which in turn generates a nice subtle color that shines out as the vibrations move just outside of what for most people is the visible range of the electromagnetic spectrum. But some people can see that. Okay, the chakras, as we have seen, are both the subject and the object of all of our interactions with our environment. We can't consider one without the other. They're the same thing. But still, they behave differently. And they require balance. Let's change gears and look at some of that physics that I told you about, that I warned you about, I should say. We're going to look at something from the master of mass and energy, Albert Einstein. The same year that Einstein published his special theory of relativity, the most important piece of science ever published by anybody, anyone anywhere, he published another piece of work on the subject of something called the photoelectric effect. Very basically, what this describes is that if you shine a line on a light on a surface, electrons, which is to say energy, will be emitted from that surface. And the energy emitted varies as a function of the wavelength of the light light below a certain frequency, doesn't generate any energy at all. Now, what does that mean? Well, the wavelength of light is what we just saw described in the electromagnetic spectrum. And the waves and the frequencies operate internally and externally. They flow through you, into you, out of you, in an endless loop of cause and effect. And of course, there is no cause and effect. Now. Energy contact is not a science show per se, and I'm resisting the temptation just to go full-on geek to you. But this stuff is fascinating, and it relates to your aura and your chakras and other things. So let's continue with the, with the dry science just for a second. Before Einstein, there was Newton, and Newton was really into understanding light. One of his books was entitled Optics, published in 1704. Now, Newton theorized that light moved like little packets of particles. In other words, when you flip on a light, it's like turning on a shotgun of little particles that bombard out constantly in every direction, and they do it continuously until you turn the light back off again. Or in yet other words, light behaves like mass or matter. There's no difference, according to Newton, and he was right at least partially. A century after Newton, there was a famous experiment, a famous observation called the double slit experiment, where it was shown that electrons behaved neither like light nor like matter. They behaved like waves, the same way ripples on waves of water behave. That is, until you watch them behaving. Then the mere act of your observing them caused them to behave completely different. Now that sounds like science fiction, 
but it's science fact. You can go to your university. It's an easily duplicatable experiment. You can go to your university and see it. Now, that double slit experiment, experiment is one of the darlings of quantum physics, but it was an observation made long before that, at least a century. It's attributed to a fellow named Thomas Young in 1801, but it was observed before that. Even the photoelectric effect was observed before Einstein came along. It was even called the Hertz effect by some, by another observer, an earlier observer. But it's just the sense that Einstein made of it is the thing that changed the world. Okay, I wish we had time to get into the Mr. Wizard of all this, but let's cut to the chase with what it has to do with you and I. You consist of 100% atoms. Your holes in empty space, bags of nothing with no real substance worth mentioning. What you are is a bunch of nothing floating around other nothings in fields of something. And because we're atoms, we're largely electrons. And electrons, along with protons and neutrons, are the only mass you have. But electrons don't behave like matter most of the time. They behave like waves, like waves on the ocean, like the waves of the electromagnetic spectrum. Until you observe them, of course, until you become aware of them. And then they act completely differently. And so now you know why the old mystics were so preoccupied with observation and awareness. Light acts like matter, but matter acts like waves. It's an endless loop. It's perpetual motion. The only temporal or temporary component is the physical world. When the waves of the electron interact with the physical plane, they generate energy. But the energy created is a function of the waves of the light we transmit which means that we both generate energy when we're contacted by light and we generate light when we're contacted by energy and we're contacted by all of those things all seven thousand trillion trillion atoms of us constantly now our chakras and our aura have to do with how they orbit when we understand that we'll understand what the saints of most faiths say when they talk about letting your light shine stuff like that and we'll understand what it has to do with our health and our growth and our happiness and our self-improvement and the realization of our full potential. We'll have to, uh, we'll have, to have some understanding of, of how we look the way we look and feel the way we feel. And that's all the time we have today. Thank you for joining me. We'll look at this more next time. Until then, I wish you peace and positive energy and a healthy life. Better